Hi Sagittarius, it's Power and Light Tarot coming at you with a reading today. We have another bombshell tarot reading. Yes, we do, and we hope you guys are well. Let's see what the animal spirit cards have to say. Let's see what we have for Sagittarius. This is going to be for Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, and anybody, uh, because these readings are for the collective. They are, and we have the elk. Okay, so there he is, and the elk is uh, usually about wisdom. Let's have a look at the elk and he is of the earth element I feel like he is yeah mm-hmm see what they say here all right stable resilient headstrong and the father okay so this is about a leader or a father it's about somebody who provides stability somebody who is strong and resilient uh, headstrong too. Interesting, right? And so this is about somebody who can be supportive and kind and consistent. Okay. Sounds good to me, right? And the great elk represents the earth element in its masculine form. This means it provides underlying support and stability amidst life's many changes, right? Like your dad's really supposed to do, right? Uh, you know, not saying they do, but I'm just saying that's kind of their role, isn't it? <laughs> or was. Uh, an elk personality, whether male or female, is fully established in themselves and knows their core values. Yeah, this is somebody, somebody who knows themselves uh, in and out. Not they're just, well, their core values, but uh, they know who they are. Uh, yes, on a very deep level, we could say that's core values. They became... They become known and respected for acting in ways that uphold those values. Sometimes the elk's ego can become inflated. But for the most part, they make damn good fathers, mothers, lovers, and friends. The world needs more elk energy. For sure. So let's see uh, what else we have. And Sagittarius, this may be about you or the person you're dealing with. If you would like a psychic reading, they are accurate. I'm a silver grad. They're really a lot of fun. They're very personal. We do them on the phone or a video call. <coughs> and uh, yeah, it could be about your issues, uh, Sagittarius. Not saying you have any issues, but uh, everybody sometimes uh, has some matters they need guidance on. And uh, it could be about somebody else, of course. Yes, it can. Uh, let's, doesn't have, it could be, you know, romantic or not, ca career or not. Yeah, let's see what else we have. And we're using these cards today. And we have the chess player. Okay, so this is strategy. And uh, yeah, we see this man trying to make his move here. But he knows what he wants in this card because we have Virgo over here. And that's the Virgo glyph. And the Virgo knows what they want. They, you know, they sometimes overanalyze. But they do for the most part, yeah. And we have Gemini and... Uh, so these are both ruled by Mercury. Gemini is of the mind. That's why he is playing. Uh, he's not really playing. He's just trying to find out his next move. What he's doing here, he's playing chess with himself, saying, well, if I move here, if I do this with this move, uh, will it be better or should I move this over here? That's very Virgo and very analytical and very Gemini as well. Uh, but yeah, and here's the messenger. He has his hand in front of the messenger and that is Hermes and so there he is like like hmm somebody I feel like wants to probably contact you Sagittarius uh and they may be maybe a little challenged uh chess is always a challenge it is right uh especially if you had a beer and you're tired just kidding <laughs> so, last time I played tennis uh, not tennis uh chess it was like that but of course, it represents challenge because it really represents war, right? You can call this war of the wits if you would like, but it is based on, uh, it's based on war, so it's challenging. And so we see him playing, you know, he even has a magnifying glass over here. <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, this is somebody who wants to kind of be, uh, provide some type of stability for you, I believe. And they are trying to figure out how to tell you that. That's how it looks here. Let's see what else we have. And interesting on the scoreboard is the king. So the king is about power. Uh, and then we have the servitor. And the servitor is about healing. But it can be about accepting a truth in this deck. And here is the servitor. And she is the nun, basically. And uh, yeah, interesting. 
for sure. And she, he's already thrown these other pieces, uh, chess pieces on the floor underneath him. So he knows I'm not doing, I'm not using those. I'm not making those moves. Yeah, it's interesting. And we have Sleeping Beauty. And so here, this is what I mean. Somebody really loves you, right? And so somebody wants to be with you and there could be a lot of passion and right. Uh, but Sleeping Beauty is about true love right? She's always, she was waiting for Prince Charming to come. And then the old jealous witch, uh, put a spell on her and said, you'll be here. You'll be asleep for a long time. She she didn't age though, Sagittarius, right? No, she didn't while she was. And so here she is lying here, beautiful. And there's a lot of, uh, you know, we have the roses, but of course with roses comes thorns and the two hands are trying to, uh, get a hold of each other. And this looks like a baby's hand here. It's very interesting. Uh, but we have the Cancer and the Piscean, uh, the Piscean glyph here. And Pisces can be about secrets, right? Definitely can. Maybe you were a secret, but uh, maybe you are waiting for this person to uh, sort of quote unquote rescue you. It's possible. Or maybe they are just going to rescue you. That, I mean, somebody wants to really kind of take control with this masculine elk. When I say rescue, it could be like come to your just come and be with you and, and maybe really love you because it does look like somebody loves you here with this father who wants to provide stability, the father type, father figure. It doesn't have to be a father, you guys. It just means somebody, uh, divine masculine, but they want to provide stability like a leader. And here is sleeping beauty. And she does mean sex and passion and true love, but she means a secret as well. Because he didn't know she was in here in, in the, you know, the whole Sleeping Beauty story. He didn't know the witch did that. And I'm not sure how he found out. I think he was just riding along on his horse or maybe somebody told him, right? Maybe it was a frog. I don't remember the story. Uh, I just remember I thought it was a little bit boring. I kind of did. Uh, interesting. I like Snow White better. <laughs> and so let's see what else we have. We also have, yeah, they're showing Pisces twice. Here is the moon. This is Cancer. And so Cancer is our support system. Cancer is the fourth house of family and what nurtures us and uh, what, you know, what helps us be uh, like what supports us, our emotions, right? And kind of what we need, right? And so over here, emotionally, over here is uh, the Pisces glyph too. Uh, and so, yeah, let's see, that's the Neptune. And now we have, this card is called guilt and he is running back to the book, the sparkling stream, uh, also known as the babbling brook, right? It's not really babbling or talking, but Hey, and so the sparkling stream and he, this is paradise. This is supposed to be paradise as the unicorn is there and it is very beautiful here. So he runs back and he says, I'm here to protect what I feel like is paradise and I feel guilty and I feel bad, but I'm here. Yes. And he's like, you can tell he's very compelled to, to return to the sparkling stream or to get here possibly. Right. And here we have Aries and Aries is about passion. Yeah. Aries is the first house, but it is ruled by Mars. It's ruled by, this is about passion. It's also about taking action and that's what he is doing. It's the first house, right? When you're born, he is the first house. Uh, how you come into the world. This is Aries, uh, right? It talks about other things, but it's a cardinal sign. I'm going to do this. I'm taking action. And here is, this is Aries again. We have Taurus as well and Virgo. So Taurus is uh, here about Venus. Yes. And love and passion and sex. Uh, and the good things in life could be, uh, right? And then we have Virgo over here. And Virgo is about the, uh, analyzing once again, like I said, like, you know, Virgo can be about, uh, ruled by Mercury plans and goals. It's, you know, but it is definitely about thinking and that's what he's doing. Playing that playing chess with himself. Yeah. It's like solitaire. And we have, uh, Fortuna and this is like the future. So this is very kind of, uh, here it's, it is, it's about the future. It's also about healing and he's standing underneath this, uh, it looks like he's healing or receiving the light, receiving the intuition. All the stars are being showered on him and rays also these rays. Uh, and we have Leo over here, the Leo glyph and, uh, Leo is about love and children. And, uh, it can be about relationships as well. And it's also, uh, about ego, mm -hmm. the fifth house of creativity as well. Somebody could, this could be like, 
this can be like I'm gonna you know I'm being it can be kind of awakening too uh down here is the sun and that represents Leo yeah he's receiving this clarity that's what this is about because the sun represents clarity uh, and warmth and power and here's Jupiter and Jupiter is about expansion it's also about your wisdom right the ninth house of spirituality and philosophy it's also about your wisdom in order to expand really it's kind of really what it's about uh and so you know here he is he's like receiving the wisdom that's what he's doing there so let's see what else we have and today sagittarius we we're going to use the Connolly deck and this is uh the wonderful irish deck yeah i feel like it is and uh Mm -hmm. haven't used it in a while and uh see what it has to say before i don't want to forget what it says no i don't <laughs> see we have sagittarius and uh yeah see what we got for you guys and the bottom of the deck here is the magician and we know the magician is you know can be an aries but it's about a new beginning it's about manifesting it's about using your powers to do that right uh here he is uh he's kind of interesting looking and we also have it with the five of cups the five of cups is grieving or a major disappointment uh can be an ending right and you know disappointed but something uh that something ends but it sometimes is ending you want on your own uh it can be regret but we're going to look at that too and let's put this to the side and let's have a look here what they say about their version of the five of cups yeah let's see what it says here mm-hmm Oh, excuse me. Okay, where are the cups at? And okay. Oh, they 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 cut the cups out of here. Just kidding, Sagittarius. Five of Cups is about you will find it difficult to explain the turmoil you feel inside. Yeah, and this somebody has felt turmoil here because they either have regret or they're guilty over here it can be guilty for not understanding who who you really who's really important to you where your priorities lie in other words somebody might not have known next to sleeping beauty that you are the one that they really wanted to be with they might have like overlooked how much they loved you or they, like they didn't get it because next to this card here and then we have this healing or receiving the light yeah somebody just didn't know and they feel guilty about it yes oh my goodness let's see what we got here and we start with the queen of wands eight of wands the queen of pentacles maybe there's a, uh, a virgo taurus or uh virgo taurus or capricorn and judgment wow judgment is a trip the sun is reversed ace of pentacles two of cups and the six of pentacles so this is very cool here because you have been recognized here. Uh, this is uh, a, a recognition of sorts, the Six of Pentacles. Let's move the camera down. And we start with the Queen of Wands, and she's definitely somebody who trusts her intuition. Uh, yes, yeah, she is. Mm -hmm. A woman who has an attractive personality and draws people to her. Okay. So, yeah, fire signs can definitely draw. Anybody can, but... Uh, she's supposed to have, she's kind of, when they say attractive personalities, because uh, it can be extroverted or, uh, you know, they like, uh, they, they like, they're passionate because of the wands and things like that. Uh, and, you know, movement and things like that. Just things kind of happening. Uh, that is what the wands energy is about. It's also about trusting your intuition. It is because she is, uh, for sure it is in this reading for sure, because this is Sagittarius is reading. Uh, in the ninth house of spirituality that Sagittarius rules yeah interesting okay now in the challenge is the eight of wands and this is about change and flux it is uh sitting in the challenge acceleration in your affairs movement news coming in okay so this is change and flux okay and uh you know it's, things are going to be speeding up in your affairs Sagittarius movement right this is what i was kind of talking about and news coming in so here we have it in the challenge so this person's going to find it hard to tell you this and i was saying that because he has hermes in front of him the messenger and he's just going to put, move hermes to where he wants him yeah uh on the on the chessboard so this is definitely like you know I, I need to make the right move or i need to come across to sagittarius in a in a certain way 
they have guilt they did something here sagittarius yeah uh tell them to come deal with you know power and light let's see what the queen of pentacles sitting in the root and uh, a good position a creative lady with many talents family oriented and charitable so the elk can be about somebody who is family oriented remember they talked about the father and providing stability and consistency yeah and somebody wants to tell you this, that they want to provide this stability to you, I'm pretty sure, uh, or for you. And uh, yeah, and we do, is we have the Ace of Pentacles too in the environment. The Ace of Pentacles is the stable Ace, right? Uh, right, where we want to provide something of value, but like long lasting because there is value to it. Yeah, and uh, this can be money, so it can provide financial stability as well the seven of wands and uh yeah let's see what the seven of wands uh their version is you are blessed with inner strength you can accomplish your goal so this is in the past and somebody thought this is it either this leader or somebody who feels guilty and uh, really wants to do the right thing it, they knew this they knew that they could accomplish this goal in the past but the challenge here is change in movement for there is still something challenging something right and we talked about this five of cups some type of inner turmoil uh that is difficult to explain yeah mm -hmm. so uh yeah let's see what else we have and we have the uh excuse me the five of pentacles right here is that the five uh this is the four of pentacles i beg your pardon so this is usually about holding on and this is the mindset it was in the reverse uh right and the four of pentacles is strong attachment to materialistic pursuits and endeavors this can be firmly footed keep control so he wants to hold on the mindset is to stay in control honestly this is it's not really about control in terms of like in a bad way at all no this is uh really about earthly endeavors basically mm -hmm. firmly footed keep control uh maybe somebody wants to hold on to money here possibly but let's get a card for the four of pentacles here firmly footed though when we see this uh elk that is about somebody who's firmly footed the knight of wands all right and uh that may be you sagittarius it could be a young man can create vibrations that will call for sudden decisions or change in life yeah so that makes that makes a lot of sense because uh the knights bring offers and so you know whenever whenever we have an offer uh, we can have change of course right uh and so we have this knight of wands Mm -hmm. somebody is creating vibrations wow this is like somebody has awakened over here in some on some level because of this card for the tura this is about the future but it's about healing and wisdom both wow uh receiving clarity through the wisdom through you know uh, through the universe or through an awakening yeah and so mm -hmm. sudden decisions or change and that is showing up in the mindset somebody is firmly footed and they want change they definitely do yeah and they are making a decision and over here we saw that they had the confidence to do this i can do this right judgments here wow judgment is a major kind of a awakening and he is both the woman and the child i believe in this he's wearing uh he has a halo on his head this is about major transformation, rebirth, self-judgment. Wow. We might have self-judgment here because we have guilt. Whenever we have guilt, right? If, you're, if, you're, if you feel guilty about something, you're passing judgment on yourself, right? Uh, guilt is about the past and guilt doesn't do anything for anybody and just keeps the person who's guilty is, uh, feel, having them feel stuck. Yeah, it's a waste. Guilt is a waste of energy and time for sure it is uh the higher consciousness a renewal of the inner you see this is rebirth okay the higher consciousness is the child already emerging into the new existence the child points the way naked and void of all previous thought patterns yeah naked and void of conditioning naked and void of childhood wounds of doctrine of dogma that's what uh the child represents here so yeah and so let's see what else we have here 
The female consciousness is dressed in a beautiful blue gown of spirituality. On her head and around her neck is a scarf of purity. She no longer wears shoes. She has recognized a new fertile world of life. The conscious level is the man in the process of reality. Before him is the book of life, his life. He is in the process of self-judgment and self-analysis. It has been his greatest battle. The key word is self-analysis. Okay, so that's why we have the guilt here. And somebody is passing judgment here. In this case, this is about rebirth. This is about change. I'm Somebody is changing here after they really, I mean, in, in a very casual way to say it, really took a good look at themselves. But this is about really going deep about who am I and why have I done the things I've done? And uh, why did possibly I treat uh, so-and-so this way, right? Or Sagittarius this way? And why did I make the decisions, right? Yes, choi and choices I've made because that's really what changes our reality, right? And, you know, uh, either beckons a new beginning for us or, you know, or kind of chaos, right? So judgment is here. It's self-judgment. We have the sun reverse, Sagittarius. Uh, the sun is, mm-hmm. Uh, brings golden opportunity. It's in the reverse. So this is the concern. The sun will bring personal joy. Okay. In the reverse, this talks about a need for a realistic outlook on life. Be perfectly honest with yourself. This is, this is the concern. Somebody was not being realistic and because they didn't know what they wanted. When Sleeping Beauty is next to the guilt card, they did not know what they wanted because they didn't know themselves. That's why, that's what this judgment is about. It's about somebody who really sits down with themselves, uh, maybe for maybe more than many, more than one sessions or right. Uh, several times could be definitely and in contemplation or in, uh, in, you know, introspection, right. And reflection about themselves and their deeds. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, let's look at this. Where is that reversed at? Yeah, need, a, need for a realistic outlook on life. Be perfectly honest with yourself. Stop daydreaming and put some effort into reaching your goals. Depression or failure is not for you. This is the concern. So somebody's coming here because this looks like this person doesn't, like is saying to themselves, kind of having a talk next to judgment, like, hey, I don't want to be depressed and uh, I need to, you know, put some effort into my goals. And we know what the goal is here. The goal is this two of cups over here and the ace of pentacles right here. The ace of pentacles, uh, let's see what else it says here. Yeah, stop depression or failure is not for you. Wow. Uh, this is the concern. Wow, that is a trip. Somebody here has really learned here and really kind of upped their consciousness about themselves, about the true meaning of life and yeah and god for sure and here or the universe right however you like three of uh three of pentacles showing up here and this is showing up in let's have a look at that three of pentacles and it is a uh, well-informed see this is different than a regular deck you have great skill ability and talent recognition is due sometimes it is about recognition uh, and it is here. So it's showing up here with the sun card reversed. Recognition is due. This is somebody who realizes when they ran back to this paradise and they felt guilty about it, right? When they ran back to that, uh, they realized that I, I need to recognize this is true. I need to recognize that if I want this, I have to take action. Uh, it's also recognizing you, Sagittarius. Yeah, uh, well-informed, the concern. You have great skill, ability, and talent. And up here, it kind of spoke about uh, you had to take a really good look at yourself. So somebody now knows uh, what they want or what they where, where they're going in their life. Yeah, I mean, God, we all need to know, right? Uh, and sometimes it takes time to figure that out, and that's totally fine. Uh, and that is what your, your chart can help you with. Yes, your... Uh, your natal chart can definitely help you with, if you are confused in your direction in your life, uh, that will definitely help you uh, if it is done well, of course, right? Uh, not if you just kind of look it up and go, let me figure this out. No, it doesn't work like that. Uh, and so we also have the Ace of Pentacles, beginning of prosperity and successful ventures in the environment. Sagittarius, this is coming, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just like today, this guy kept saying, you know, ball coming towards you. Uh, right. And I just say, 
uh, I don't know, from Gaul coming, right? Because he doesn't want to hit you in the head with the tennis ball, right? Uh, coming towards you, right? Coming toward you. He says in a nice way, I'm over there, hey, ball coming, ball coming. Like, turn around before you get hit in the head, right? Uh, this is coming for you. It's in your environment. And the hopes and fears here is the two of, uh, the two. it's really the hopes and desires, but hey, it can always be a fear. Uh, but it is definitely the hopes and desires in this spread. This is how I do it. And here she is, uh, and here he is, and they're together. And the infinity sign is over them. This is somebody who wants to stay with you for all time, Sagittarius, with this infinity sign. Yeah. And in the potential outcome is the six of pentacles. This is a great card. Uh, she's holding on to him. Uh, and they are, I don't know, kind of in a crowd. And the six of pentacles speaks of happy atmosphere. You are about to enjoy the fruits of your labor, a vibrant personal cycle. Look at that. It shows up in the potential outcome. This is a great reading, Sagittarius. Uh, it just is. And thanks so much for joining me. Get your psychic reading. Get your chart. Yeah, your chart really helps you. That is your life map. It is your map for your life. It really is. Your progress chart shows you how you are evolving and uh, what to avoid. And it's just really, really great, right? Your natal chart is what you're born with. Uh, you're born with these, ta with these talents, these gifts, but you can also be born with uh, things, you know, things in the family or uh, things, you know, about a lot. It could be health, but uh, whatever you're born with. And, uh, but, you know, it can be sometimes uh, we are born sometimes with fears and doubts, but it just uh, really kind of shows you who you are, your birth chart. It can show you what you're not aware of. Yeah. And sometimes that are, those are talents, uh, right? But sometimes they are, hey, oh, I kind of thought that, like once you get it in your chart, I kind of thought that, but I, I kept pushing it under the rug, right? And that is what your chart can really teach you. Yeah, it's really, it's, it uh, talks about your health and and everything. Yeah, the 12 houses of motivations and needs. I always recommend somebody getting their chart uh, because it is so fascinating to read about yourself uh, and what you were given. Uh, uh, it's your birthright, right? What you were given at the time of your birth. Yeah. Thanks so much for joining me. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. And if you would like to have your chart done, you should. everybody should have it done once in their life. Uh, you should uh, below in the description box, you can click on the natal chart in the calendar. Thanks so much, you guys, for joining me. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe.